Okay, so we have number of data sources. One by one, we will try to cover some data sources, uh, like some today and some in future. But let let, let me like generalize the things that how we can import the data from files, how we can import the data from IDB messages, how we can import the data from the any online service or any any website. Okay, let me just reply that candidate will when we come in. So let's try with five. Let's try to import the data from Excel and maybe text file first. So as we discussed in the last class, directly we can connect the file and you can import the data from any file. Maybe I am importing the data from any this file or maybe any other file. So how many number of tables are available there in the sheet? That sheet, uh, tables will be displayed in the list as well as sheet name will be displayed in the list. So we can select the sheet name if you want to import the data from sheet and we want to uh, import all the data available in that sheet. So if you want to import the data by table, then we can import, uh, select the table there. What I am trying to say, let me explain that thing first. But I know that you know, lots of or maybe all of you know about that thing. But I need to like uh, clear that concept first. That I'm what I'm trying to say. Hmm. Maybe I'm opening this Excel file. Because sometimes people got confused that what is the meaning of table in the Excel and what is the meaning of seed in the Excel. So let me explain that thing first. Okay, let's suppose we have this particular sheet. We have maybe this only one sheet, uh, like in the our uh, Excel worksheet. And I have some data here, maybe. Maybe any name and maybe sale. Maybe I have this data. I have some names here. Maybe we have this data here, and if you are using, if you are importing the data right now, then what it, it will display? It will display seat name only, seat one and seat two. Because right now we have two seats, so it will display name there, seat one and seat. But let's suppose we have table also here. I have imported the table here. Maybe we are using the table here, which is registered in the table. Then it will display the table name also, table one. Right now, because we are not giving the name to table, so by default it will display the default name here, available table one. So seat one, seat two, and table one. So if you will. Select the table one, then only this special data will be selected. Maybe while we have some data here also, only this special data will be selected. So that is the meaning of table and that is the meaning of seat. If you select the seat, then all the data available in this uh, and available data in that seat will be imported. And if you select the table name, table one name there, then only special data available in that table will be selected. That is the meaning of table and seat there. So let Let's import some data. Maybe get data. I'm using again Excel. Maybe I'm using this data in this data set. So, like if you are importing the data from any file, then we need to provide a path only. Means we need to select the location and we need to uh, open the file directly. Then we can import the data here. What we have here? We have three tables. So we have some large data in the table one, we have small data set in the table two. So I'm selecting table two only. And we can import that data here. So we have three options here. Load, cancel, and transform. If you will click on the cancel, then this operation will be canceled. If you will click on the load, then data will be loaded to the power bit extra. If you will click on transform, then this data will be moved to the power, uh, power query editor. So what is the meaning of power query editor? I will explain within few seconds or within few minutes. 
So we can import the data or we can move this data to the Power Query Editor window by clicking Transform Data in the desktop also and from the table name here, from, from the fields option table name also. So I will show you the unit testing also. So right now we are loading the data only. So first step, get data. We need the data to, to complete the project. We need the data for our project. So right now we are just importing the data first. So that table will be imported and uh, will be available in the field session in the right hand side in the table name as well as in the columns name. So as we see there that we have only two columns name. So two columns will be displayed under the table name. Under the returns table name. Table name the returns there. So this is the way to import. Okay. This is a way to import the data from Excel. Hello, Manoj sir. Yeah, hi. How are you? Ah, Pachana sir, Nepal bolro. Ha 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 ha. Chhika chhika. Ye apni first class. Ah, chhika chhika. First class apni to basic hi hoga. Ha. Chhika sir. Koi dekh apne. Ha, apne pas ek do candidate aur hai jo ki kam reach se join karenge. So. Abhi kitne? Abhi kitne candidate sir hamlo? Abhi four candidate hai. Aapko include karke. Acha acha. Thik hai. ठीक है और कैंडिडेट है और एक या दो कैंडिडेट और आउटसाइड कंट्री है वो लोग कल नेक्स्ट वीक से ज्वाइन करेंगे अच्छा कोई दिक्कत नहीं कोई दिक्कत नहीं सर ठीक है सो या सो वी हैव इंपोर्टेड द डेटा फ्रॉम द फाइल और एक्सेल फाइल डायरेक्टली वी कैन इंपोर्ट द डेटा सेम वे फ्रॉम एनी फाइल सो आई विल शो यू लाइक हाउ हाउ वी कैन इंपोर्ट द डेटा फ्रॉम अदर फाइल्स आल्सो राइट नाउ लेट मी इंपोर्ट वन मोर डेटा बाय फ्रॉम द टेक्स्ट फाइल और सीएसवी फाइल सो दिस इज द टेक्स्ट फाइल सेलेक्ट डेटा So whenever we will import the data, or we will try to get the data from the text file, then there is the one extra extra information here, delimiter. That is the important file, uh, important part uh, part for the text files. While we are using ETL tools, while we are we are using any other tool, this is an important part part for that project. What is the meaning of that? Because in the Excel, in the RD dimension, you know that this is the column one, this is the column two, this is the column three. But in the uh, text uh, text file. We don't have ID. Your text file don't have ID. That is the column one, which is the column. Two. So we need to differentiate the column one by column. Two. So here, data is differentiating by the comma. We have the comma uh, uh, after the order date, after the region, after the rep, after the rem, after the units. So after the items, after the unit, after uh, or I mean uh, after each and every column. So what the meaning of that? That column is differentiating by the comma only. We have other delimiters also. We can use any delimiter or custom delimiter also as per our requirement, as per our use. But right now we have the comma only, which is differentiating, which is between the columns, between each column. So that is the meaning of delimiter here. Note. Now that table will be available here also with the column names. Now second thing, let's import the data from. Any ID we must do today. We will import data from SQL Server. Later on, we will import data from MS uh, Access. Also, we will import data from Oracle. Also, and from the other files also. Files, two other files also. Two other ID we must also. Two other uh, data sources also. So let's import the data from first SQL Server ID we must. So we have some options here. To select the data, that in which way we want to import the data. Okay, so server name we need to put the server name and database name here. Database name is optional. If we not put the database name here, then all the database this will be displayed under that particular server name. The server name you put here. Okay, then we have the data connectivity mode and direct query. Mode. Then we have advanced options. So let me explain each one by one. First, let me try to import the data. My SQL was creating some problem today that which I that I will be able to connect or not. Else, I need to uh, like update the SQL software or SQL server today after classes. So let's suppose I'm putting the database name also. Okay. 
that 2019 sequencer version it is spirit to slow for this version i i optimize that thing so like right now let me show you right, right now we have three windows on the left hand side first window is report window as we discussed yesterday also the second window is data window we can review the data in that window third window is model uh, uh, model view or relationship view in this window and in this tab we can review that relationships we can create the relationships so I'm just uh, letting you know that right now we have three window here. Why I'm trying to show you, I will explain within a second. We have a little bit issue with SQL Server HP. And little bit issue with system speed also. I can't and carry all only after like lockdown will be open. Maybe I'm just trying to write down the query here. So I'm putting the server name also, oh sorry, database name also here. First, we have the number of databases here, I'm putting the database name there first. Now, data connectivity mode and uh, are available here, important directly. So I will explain this mode within a second. Let me try first that uh, we can import the data right now or not. As you notice that I have selected the second option, direct query mode. I don't, uh, I don't, I selected that, didn't select the first option, import mode. So what is the meaning of that? We will discuss it in a second. But let me load the data first. Okay, this is letting us know that we, we have already data like uh, uh, which is displaying here. Right now we are trying to import the data from the direct query mode. So do you want to import this data? What is the meaning of direct query mode? I'm going to uh, let you know that right now I'm thinking, okay, I want to import the data. It will take only time today to import the data because today only we will import the data for C from SQL Server. For normal practice, we will import the data directly from Excel. And for only like data source, data source practice, data source knowledge, then only in that, that scenario we will import the data from different data source. As we will import the data quickly from the Excel for normal day to day practice. I guess I have large data set maybe in this file. So let's discuss until then that what is the meaning of import mode there available and what is the meaning of direct mode which is available there. Import and direct query mode, okay. Third mode we have the live maybe. I will show you what is the meaning of that also. So what is the meaning of import mode and direct query mode? If you are using the import mode to, uh, like extracting the data from any RDBMS, that's when you are importing the data to the Power BI desktop. You are importing the data to the Power BI desktop. So it will occupy the space like we have the data directly in the Power BI desktop to develop the report. We can use the already imported data quickly. If you want to review the changes, then we need to refresh the data. We will check all these things practically within the minute. But what is the meaning, exact meaning of that thing, that important one, that we are importing the data in the Power BI desktop. 
and what is the meaning of direct query mode that we are creating the live connection we are creating the connection between data source and power director so we are not importing any data in that scenario we can say that table structure table schema will be displayed here what is the meaning of that the table name and column names will be available here but data will not be available so whenever we will query the data then only data will be like uh, extracted for that part of query so let me show you first thing that we have imported this data by using the direct query mode now, now i am clicking here on the data tab it is displaying the message this table uses direct query and cannot be shown so we can't review the data for direct query mode why because we are not importing the data we, we are just making the live connection and whenever we will query the data what is the meaning of that whenever we will create the chart whenever we will interact between chart then only data will be queried from the original data source right now what is the original data source sql server okay so let me import the data from the import mode also and then we will discuss that difference in detail we have some uh, the, another options here sql statement option all these things we will discuss these option also with a few minutes to date itself so right now using the import mode click okay maybe this time i'm using another table that the other table i'm using project table this time maybe okay and loading the data so until this load data will be load let's discuss the difference between these first difference as i told you that in the import mode we will load the data in the direct query mode we will make the connection between data source and power bi okay so if we are using the import mode then whenever we will query the data whenever we will query the data means whenever we will create the chart or whenever we interact between uh, like uh, visuals so that the meaning of query data whenever we will query the data then already imported data will be used okay fine already imported data will be used but in the direct query mode it will query for data data ke liye query karega it will query for data so in this particular mode in the direct query mode we will use always latest data it will receive always updated data updated data whenever we will query the data it will provide us updated data but in the import mode as as we discussed already imported data it will use already imported data okay so if we need the updated data if we need the latest data then what we need to do we need to refresh the data i will show you this thing practically okay these are the first three differences right now we have the data here this p and report development differences are also available here there is a very important uh, concept for beginners uh, like uh, just starting to learn power bi so that is a very important concept until or unless we don't have the idea what import query and direct query then we can't utilize the data we don't have idea that which mode we need to do so if we have the clear understanding and we know the clear difference between import and direct query then only we can do that we can use we can utilize these mode in better way okay so right now we have imported one more data for that we use this time import mode so data we will be able to review the data for this particular file okay data is available here data is available here so let's suppose we, because we have imported data from different different files or different different tables so let's suppose we let's review the data here Yeah. 
So all the ERS holders, that's fine. Level here. So we have some data here. For the first, uh, we have uh, for the first table we have the order priorities. For the second, we have the region. So let's suppose I'm updating some data here in the first table as well as in the second table. Just I want to show you difference whatever we are discussing. So for the table first, maybe I'm updating some data. Update this table. I'm setting value for order priority. Maybe if anybody don't have the idea about SQL, I guess you all guys have the idea. But if anybody don't have the idea, then it is not compulsory for Power BI. Why I'm using this query? I'm just want to show you the difference in whatever whatever I am discussing. For the Power BI developer, this knowledge is not required. You don't need to write the query here. I am putting maybe ABC order priority where order priority is equal to high. So I use double inverted quote here because this I just provided the class for Excel right now before that class. So we need the double inverted comma for text in Excel. And we need to use the symbol in the command. Updated data, and you, I'm using for second table also maybe. What we can do this set maybe this time reason. Maybe anything, people are maybe this time. I'm using people are multiple small r also. Fair reason is equals to maybe b. Okay, so I'm updating this data. So in, for the first table, instead of high, we are updating abc. For the second table, instead of b, we are using p2r and two small r with them. Maybe. Right now we are moving to the power bi desktop. Maybe we are creating one visual for these, these values. So maybe for first one, I'm using the data in the table. We can take data in the table. We can take data in any visual. Because as of now, I did not explain anything about visual. So I'm using any any visual right now. So for order table, uh, we have updated the reason here for orders, right? So reason and sales. So we here we have a sent no for the first table that is the order priority table and the order table. So what we have updated there we have updated reason for order priority. So we have updated for the priority here. So here we have the ABC instead of high, it is already updated data. We have the ABC here instead of high. Why? Because we are using the direct query mode for this particular table, order table. So in the order table, it will use always data as data. Whenever we will query the data, then it will query to the original data source. And from there, it will extract the value in the direct query mode. We have the we don't have data here. We have only schema of table. We consider that structure of table, table name and column name. But in the import query mode, we will use already direct or power. We will use already imported data like that. Maybe we have reason here this time and sales. So we have updated the reason in the project table. 
so here what reason we have v we have updated v with pqr but we are not getting the updated data why we need to refresh the data if we want to update that value we need to refresh the data why because it is using the already imported data so it is refreshing the data now it is updated pqr like that okay so we have discussed two three differences as of now load it will load the data import that query mode make will make connection all in the import mode it will use already imported data as we have seen here already imported data in the direct query mode it will use always updated data why because whenever we will query the data then power bi then will query the data from original data source and then it will receive the data from there so in this case we need to refresh the data in this case we will get updated data speed is what is the minimum speed why i mentioned there so query speed query execution speed will be should be faster in which mode query execution speed i am talking about query execution the query execution speed should be faster in which mode it will be faster in the import mode why because in the import mode we are using already imported data so it will query the data from power bi model itself but if we are using the direct query mode then in this time it is querying the data from the data source so that depend on the speed for direct query mode will be depend on the response of time response of the original data source but for sure speed will be query execution speed will be so in this case query execution slow query execution fast okay except this i am coming to two three more points except this we have some other differences which we will, which we will face whenever we will do practice means we can't create the um, calculated column on that in the direct query mode we can create measures with certain limitations we can can't use all the function in the direct query mode so practically whenever i will explain all these things then i will show you these differences we have some other work, practical differences also so these practical differences i will show you that's that's why i mentioned report development report development differences i will show you when i will explain that thing so you you will have idea that what is the meaning of calculated column or new column what is the meaning of new measure or calculated measure what is the use of power query iter then only i will explain this part except that we have one another important thing also so that also i will cover in my one complete slide that what is the meaning of uh, license here this type of license and what is the difference right now let me assume that power bi have the capacity of 1 gb we can't import we can import only 1 gb data to power bi okay to the power bi desktop we can import only 1 gb data so data limit will be applicable in this case Okay. In this case, data limit will not be applicable. Why? Because you are not importing the data. You are just creating the connection. There are few other algorithms also regarding to this, but we can't discuss all these things right now because it will create the lots of confusion. Okay, so let me explain one more point only regarding to data limit. So let's suppose we have the one GB data from any data source. So we are assuming that we are importing the one GB data. okay so in the power bi that data will be what we can say that compressed by default by default data will be compressed whenever we will import a data from any data source then data will be compressed in the power bi dashboard so which algorithm power bi engine should follow so as of now I, we don't have idea microsoft did not provide us that algorithm that what algorithm it will follow let's suppose we are importing the data from gb data then how much data will be will be available here but it is for sure it will be less than 1 gb we have only idea about that thing that ratio of the compressed data so if you have more duplicate then data will be compressed more 
more duplicate more compression okay so we will discuss about these things later on i guess right now we, it, it will create a confusion so these are the basic things regarding to import and direct query mode but the live mode or what is the live so if you will, we are going to import the data from ssas then there is the live connection mode instead of direct query there is the live connection mode so right now we can assume that live connection mode in the parallel service of the direct query way of working is totally different because in the ssas we are dealing with three dimensional data in the the data model or cube model and in the uh, uh, normal rdbms or in the other rdbms we are uh, dealing with the two dimensional data or table model so way to import the data step which is with, which we will follow will be totally different only the similar thing is that connect line so only similar thing is that it is a we can say that it is a parallel uh, service of a direct query mode we use in the ssas okay so these are three more to import the data from rdbms okay what it now let me explain one more last uh, query here so like the, uh, if you have already idea about power bi i mean if you are working then you have idea about this but if you are new then let me explain one more time that it is a very important question uh, question out of 10 interviews Nine interval at least will go this question nine times out of ten times will go this nine times at least. That why the difference between important direct query mode. Why because this is a very important question regarding to data extraction. We have one another thing here. Last thing that we explain regarding to uh, uh, RDMS data connection. We can write down the query here also. What is the meaning of that? So we can call the procedures from here also. So what is the meaning of that? Let's suppose I, I will come the, on this point later on. This is the regarding to think that what I told you that it will query the data from the original data source. So what is the I mean what is the timeout or all these things? So we will come on that point also later on, one by one, all the point. Right now, let me explain last point here. SQL statement or SNA required data mesh. So what we can do here, we can write down the query. SQL query. If we have the idea, then we can write down the query. Or maybe so many times, if we are working on the uh, on the report development part, and we need some specific data to develop the report, and we are asking the uh, database developer, then we need that data. We want to develop the report for that particular data. Data. So he can create. He or she can create us a small query, or maybe he can provide us a query or procedure, and then we can call that query from there. So it is the way to. With the way to filter the data only. Let's suppose we, we we are creating or we are developing the report for the maybe sales department, and we uh, are developing the report for sales data for all over the India. Okay, we have the data for all over the India, but we want to maybe uh, develop report only for Delhi city, Delhi maybe state, whatever you want to say, only for Delhi. So let's suppose for all data we have fifty thousand data. For daily, we have only one thousand or maybe two thousand or three thousand. So why we need we need to import or why we will import so much extra data in the Power BI dashboard? Obviously, it will hamper our performance. And sometimes maybe if we don't have so much space and we are looking to import the data, then also it will create a problem. So we can filter the data from here itself. How we can filter? Let's suppose I'm writing down. You don't need to write down the query if you don't have idea. Whenever the person who is managing the data will provide us that query. Select star from maybe uh, any table. So maybe I am putting a cell table where maybe state equals to daily. This small statement will reduce the number of rows. Let's suppose, as I told you, that we have fifty thousand rows all over in all over India, and we are creating the uh, report for Delhi only. We have 2000 row only for daily data then this is small statement will reduce 48000 so there are two question important question regarding to interview also or regarding to our work also that we can filter the data by using the sql query and regarding to interview purpose so many times people ask or so many times interview ask that you can could can we write down the query sql query in the power way yes you can write down the query here can we call the procedure from SQL Server? Yes, we can call the procedure also. What we need to do, we just need to use exec or exec and procedure name. 
then we will be able to import the data specific data only for which purpose this procedure has been written so there are the two two things what we can do we can import or we can call the procedure also from here and we can call the sql query from here so we can execute the sql query from here in the import mode to reduce the data or to filter the data okay these are the basic thing regarding to this i i if you are able to see we have few options in the downside also we have two options uh, like one option here also we will discuss later on about these things as of now if you have query regarding to this then you can ask or you have any confusion the person who don't have any idea if you have any confusion then you can ask me. yeah it's fine it's fine so if you have any confusion you can ask me i can repeat because again it is a very important concept to start working it is not only for sql it is for all the rdbms Now, if anybody have any query regarding this, I can uh, repeat that that particular concept. We need to check so many things. Practically later on, also for important direct pyramid, as I told you that can we create uh, calculate column or not? Can we create how and um, what uh, like uh, constant are available to create the measures? Which function we can't access in the past? The other which part of the other things which uh, will be uh, like impacted if you are using a direct pyramid. Number of things we need to discuss later on, but right now this is the basic thing to import the data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi. Yeah. This is Sudhak here. Yeah. yeah, Sudhak. So to write that query and all, you know, what languages should I know? Like uh, the SQL or R, Python, which one? Which one is good one? Okay. So to write down the query here, we need we should have the idea about SQL. If you want to write down the query, then we need to, we need, we should have an idea about SQL query. Okay. We have the R and Python also here, but for different purposes. So I will let you know about that later on. But I will not come uh, cover that part. That how we can use the R, how how we can use the Python. Because if you are going to use the R while in the data analysis part, while in the maybe uh, creation for the custom uh, charts, we need to install the Python library. We need to follow the number of steps. So we should have. If you have the idea, if you are the developer, if you have the knowledge of R and Python language, then we can use the R and Python language also, but for different purposes. For the for the custom uh, visual creation, for the custom, I mean, advanced level data analysis in the Power Query editor. So we, have, uh, we can use it at two places, in the visuals and in the Power Query editor also, R and Python. Okay. But yeah, but I will let you know only that thing that we can use that thing uh, R or Python here for this particular purpose and there for this particular purpose. But I will cover that part again. As I told you, that's what I want to use. I want to write on the R script here. So by just clicking here, I can't write down the script. I need to install the full library also. Then only I will able to write, I will create a custom script here. Okay. okay. We, we can't use directly by using this particular editor. We need to apply that. Yeah, we need to apply, uh, install the number of libraries also for that particular purpose. Okay. Again, for SQL query, as I guess you have the idea about the SQL language, but if you don't, if you don't have idea about SQL language, then also you don't need to bother about that. But as you know, that uh, you are also working on the power base. So power is a self-dependent. The person who is managing the data will provide us that particular maybe query. That okay, you need this specific data. Let's run that particular query from there. Okay. Okay. Now let's move to the another part. So. Let me show you now. I will uh, like uh, show you some data source, other data sources later on also. Maybe IDMS, SSAS, maybe from Azure, maybe from like uh, MS Access, some other files also. We will use one by one later on in the, our coming classes. Right now, let me use, use one more data source that how we can import the data from maybe any website from any online. Uh, we can say that link. Okay, it will take little bit more time because whenever we will import data from any website, any link, then it will optimize all the tables available for that particular site, then it will import the data. So here, let me show you what I, I can cover later on. I, I will 
try to import the data. I will, I will let you know how to import the data. I will use the data that I report for X, XML, JSON. Okay, for PDF, we already imported the data for Excel and text file. Okay, Excel database, SQL Server, we, we will use legally SQL Server and Excel for day to day practice. Except that uh, Oracle, okay, I will import data from Oracle also or some other data sources also, time by time. Okay, because I can't install each and every data source in my system. But I will let you know, let you know the way to import the data from each category that how to import from online service, how to import from maybe RDMS, how to import from maybe files, etc. etc. So that's why I want to import the data from website right now. If you are looking to import the data from website, then it will take a little bit more time. Why? Because it will optimize all the tables available for that website and it will query the data from the server. On the regular basis, I will not like to open the SQL also because SQL is my um, like hampering the performance of my system. This latest version 2019. I have all the components, I have my components also. I have some projects also regarding to that. That's why it is hampering the performance, I guess. I optimize these things by myself. So maybe um, any any file, maybe uh, world population, I have imported data few times from this particular website. Sorry, by default, Power BI uh, connector optimize all the available table here. We just need to copy this particular link and paste it and click connect. But it will take lots of time. It will optimize all the tables regarding to that website then it will carry the data from the server then server will give response then only we will get the tables here so it will spend some time there so it will spend some time to perform this particular operation again depends on the server speed if server is busy then it will take more time if server have more load, then it will take more time. If server have less load, then it, it will server will respond quickly with server regarding to that particular website. Why I'm using these words these words because server of that website and all these things? Because this these things can connect easily to us that yeah, how we are getting exactly data. Mm -hmm. We are getting this data not from that particular link. We are getting this data from the server. The server who is running for that particular website. Maybe Oracle server, maybe SQL server, and where all the data is stored. Another important type, all the servers regarding to any website will be always a running status. Maybe by, by, by mistake, we are using any website, any such website, who like to the person not using on regular basis maybe that, that is our personal website and we have to have shut down our server because we use that website on, only whenever we are on the, in the office or maybe like that and we are trying to connect to that website and we are trying to extract the data so we will we'll not be able to extract the data even if you will try to import the data from sql server and sql server is not in the running state then also you can't import the data from sql server Every server from where they are getting the data should be running this state. As I told you, it will take some time, it will extract all the tables from there, then it will 
uh, query to the server, then server, then server will respond for this for this request. It is the very first step and very necessary step to get data. First, we need data, and we need to select the exact required way for our project for our requirement that which way or which mode we want we are looking to use that's so if we have the rdbms edge, so we discuss the difference between these modes so we should have idea that which mode mode is suitable for us or what is the requirement of our project then we will select the requirement from there so we have these tables okay number of tables are available here let me select only one table and let me import the data I have all the things at the same time. Okay, click on low. Current wide population is changing every second. Now in the right hand side, in the very right hand side, we have the all the tables, whatever we have imported. So we have imported tables from here, like from SQLs by using import mode and by using direct query mode. We have imported tables from the Excel and we have imported tables from the uh, text file. And now last file, uh, last table we are importing from the website. So that is the simple way to import data from different, different data sources. Later on, we will discuss about more data sources. Okay. Now, second step. After that, second steps, we we will follow like clean up and transform the data. Can clean up and transform the data by using the Power Query editor. Okay, so as I told you that if I will do the same practice every day that I will import the data from SQL from website and it will take lots of time. So in, for normal practice, I will import the data from Excel only. Whenever there will be a requirement to show any particular step, then only I will import the data from different different data sources. As for day-to-day -day practice, I will import the data only from Excel. Okay, now we have table eight here. That is we use from the Different data source. Now, the important thing here is that let's suppose if we have the data, same data regarding to same project, and we are importing from different different data sources, maybe because maybe different different team handling the data in different data source. Somebody is handling SQL, somebody Oracle, some somebody maybe in the website, and then somebody maybe in the Excel file. So we can import the data from all the data sources, and we can use that data together in single report development. Major thing is that regarding to that that. There should be relationship between all tables. Why relationship is, is important? Because there are some certain DAX functions that relationship required for the DAX, DAX function. Sometimes we will use the data from different tables, cross filter data, we will use the uh, cross table data. That in that scenario, relationship also will be important. So after power query editor, after transformation of data, we will move to the relationship. So right now I'm clicking on the, on the transform data. As I told you, whenever we were, we was loading the data, then there was the three steps: load, transform, and cancel. Okay. Here we have already transformed the step. And if you click on the three door, then also we have here uh, added query. So it is a similar step of transform data. Why? Because before that there was the also a step named called uh, query, added query, and whenever transform we are loading there, there also that na uh, name was added query. But Microsoft changed this name and changed that name, but this name is available like latest name as of now. Maybe they can update within month or maybe sometimes. So how we can move to the power creator by clicking here, by clicking here, 
so by clicking there at the time of data loss this is a power query editor you will use this query editor to transform the data okay so first step we have similar like any like any other file like maybe excel for many other uh, any other file if you want to save the data then we can click on the apply after applying any step and if you want to update the data only then we need to click on apply then only updated data will be available in the power export if you don't want to update the data and we want to close this picture then we need to click on the close if you want to apply the changes whatever we uh, did here and then you want to close the this particular uh, window also then we need to click on close and apply new source we can import the data from here also so as, as i told you at that time of uh, in the, like in the in, in demo class yesterday that power query editor will work like ecl tool for power bi desktop okay you could exactly if you are talking about ecl tool what is the use of any ecl ecl tool to transform data or sorry to extract data transform and load to another data source so we have number of data ecl tools very basic ssis or informatica that is not something like that that is available only for power bi dashboard so we can extract the data by using the data source from here then we can transform the data and we can load to that, that data to the power bi dashboard that's why sometimes or some maybe somewhere you, you can uh, like read that line that power bi editor is the easier tool for power bi dashboard so we can import the data from here also similar way we 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 were we were importing the data we have imported it from the power bi dashboard we can import data here also recent data source all the data sources we use essentially will be available here we just need to click that and it will directly connect to data, that data source website we use the server uh, sql server we use the sql server text file excel all the recent data source enter data we can create a new table also by just clicking on enter data by just clicking on the enter data so here we can put manually we can put the data manually if you want to put the data manually we can copy the data also that's why i want to create data manually maybe employee name or maybe sale so employee name abc maybe sale x uh, sorry maybe say 500 i can use, i can create the data here maybe i want to create data for practice purpose and i don't want to import the data and i can create here maybe if i want to copy, copy paste the data here we can copy paste the data also let's suppose uh, i have only small data here maybe i have only small data here name jansen maybe have seen or only three four rows and this is x y z if you are maybe five and by six and by hundred and fifty oh sorry five and by maybe six and by maybe seven and by anything So I'm copying this data and I'm pasting it. Click here on the first cell and paste the data. Okay, so we can give the table here, or we can copy paste the data also. We can create new table here. So rarely this operation required because we have already managed data somewhere. For that data only, we are creating the report. Okay, so we have managed data and we are creating the report for that particular data. So we will majorly we will import the data from somebody. So many data source rarely will create the table here. But if we need, then we can create a table here, and we can put that table in maybe new name, new table. Click OK. Now new table will be available here in the left hand side. So these are the queries. Queries means table. First table, second table, third table, fourth table. All the tables which we have imported and the table which we have created now after we have with the name of new table. In the left hand side below the query session all the tables whatever we have 
the list of tables will be available here. In the right hand, right hand side, the staffs, whatever staffs we will apply on any table, all the applied staff will be available here. So we can undo the staff also from here. We will check that thing once we move forward. Here in the property, in the property, we have the table name. And also we have that similar thing here also. So if I click on all code. All, all properties here. Only if I click on the properties here, same window will be open. So that's why I want to change the table name again. Maybe I'm putting power table, and I want to provide some description regarding that table. I mean that table, that this table contains this type of data and etc. etc. Provide that particular description. Click on it. Now table name will be changed. Power table. If I click here also. Then it will open same thing that particular window. So regarding to table. Okay, after that we have data source setting. If I will click on the data source setting, so we have some maybe uh, like uh, what can I say? Data access setting so here also. So that I mean regarding to permission. So that permission we will discuss later on in our syllabus whenever. The, the uh, uh, day fix, I will discuss that time. Right now, let me explain that what is the meaning of data source setting. So, let's suppose we have the scenario that we have imported the data from Excel file, and somebody changed the name of that Excel file, or maybe somebody changed the location of that Excel file, and we are trying to refresh the data. Then we will not be able to refresh that data. Why? Because it will look for that particular file, and that file is not available there, or maybe the uh, name of uh, name has been changed. So in that scenario, what we need to do? Okay, let's suppose we use this one data set one. Yeah, we use this Excel file. Maybe so just click on the change source and provide a new file for file. Maybe for Excel file, maybe for CSV file, for maybe for any other type of file. Click on change source and provide the new file and just click OK. Then you can refresh the data and things whatever you, you want to do, you can do that. Okay, right now I'm just explaining the basic thing regarding that. We we'll explain some more options later on regarding that. Let's suppose for X, uh, SQL also, we have certain things like somebody change the database name, maybe. Okay, or maybe there is a requirement that maybe there is a change in the server name also. We have uploaded the data or to the new server, maybe anything like that. And we want to refresh the data. So, in that scenario, we will a far away desktop or far away even we will be able to extract the data. We will not be able to refer the data. We need to change that thing also. Just click on the change source and we need to change the server name or database name or whatever we have changed there. Okay, we need to do that thing. Maybe let's suppose we are using the data from website and somebody has changed the name of URL. Maybe due to some reason they put the new URL and they uploaded that particular data to the new URL, whatever it was there. Then also we need to change the name there. Then only we can refresh the data. But let's suppose we are using this data as a snapshot only means we don't, don't we don't want to refresh the data. In that scenario, we don't need to edit the data source setting because in that scenario we, we, we will not we will not look to refresh the data. So we don't need to refresh the data source setting. So data source means data source setting means setting regarding to data source from where we are getting the data. So we want to make the changes in the path while we are using the Excel path, while we are using the SQL path, Oracle path, web, web path, any path. We need to make change in the, that particular path. That is the meaning of data source setting right now, as of now. Okay, after that, we have the manage parameters. So it is a little bit advanced topic and very important topic. It has a very, I can say that uh, vast uh, scope in the Power BI. We can dynamic, we can dynamic, uh, like make the things dynamic by using this. We can all the custom functions by using the parameters. We can use this particular option in a variety of ways. Let's suppose we are importing the data in the SQL server. Okay, so we have a number of data sources. So I don't want to remember the things. On the runtime, I just want to change the server name. Maybe if I use the multiple server and database name, so I can I can create two parameters for that thing. And I, I can use that. But as I told you, this is a little bit advanced topic. Whenever we will use uh, use through to use the Power BI, then I will explain that particular part with at least three four examples. Okay, it, 
in sim simple terms, we use managed parameter to make things dynamic. Runtime, we can change the things at the runtime, or we can call the functions. And in that scenario, also we can use this. Okay, after that refresh preview, if you want to refresh the data, we can we can use the refresh preview. After that, we have the properties here, and we discussed right now that what the minimum properties. Then we have the advanced editor. So from here we will cover in the next class. As I told you that today also we will have little bit less class. We have two more candidates who will join by coming class. Okay, so if you have any query regarding to today till now, whatever I have explained, then you can ask. From here we will continue by next class. Hello. Yeah, Sudha. Um, suppose you know we have some tool you know which has some logging credentials like ID and password. From there, you know how can I uh, pull the data? Like it should be automatically. Is it possible? Could you repeat it? Some, somehow we have any other tool, right? And we don't have that tool like let it, let it be same as Avaya, whatever. Yeah, we, we don't have like uh, inbuilt character for that thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in that scenario also we can import that data, but we need to uh, execute some extra path. We need to execute some extra step for, uh, step for that particular thing. Mm -hmm. But I need to uh, like uh, review that thing one more time because I did not use that thing since long, but uh, around a few months uh, before or four five months before, I discussed that thing with one candidate that there was a requirement that they were using local tool in their organization and he or she was, uh, he was looking to import the data from that tool. So we need to follow some extra path. We need to customize that things. We can do, or we have uh, thing to do that thing. Okay, okay. Okay, but right now I can't do that thing. But certainly I, I, I yeah, certainly I can guide you that how we can do that. Thing. All right, all right. Please get later, not now. Mm -hmm. Sure, Please sure. Get later, not now. Sorry, could you repeat? No, you can guide us later, not now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Nipun, Swarab, and like Kopi. If you guys have any query for today's session, you can ask. Day by coming session, we will have uh, fix one and a half hour session minimum. Or depends on the topics. Yes, Swarab, is it fine? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine for me. Yeah, okay, then uh, like I will share the video with you guys and if anybody have any query right now or later on also whenever you will do the video and you whenever you will do the practice then also you can ask. Okay. Okay. So I guess nobody have any query right now and we will meet in coming class with one or two as at least two new candidates. Okay guys, then that's it from my side for today. Okay, so I'm closing the session. I will share you video with Arun for all of you. You guys need to share the email ID. I, I have email ID, uh, I guess few, uh, few of your pupils, but if uh, anybody did not share as of now, then you can you need to share your email ID on WhatsApp. Okay, if you already share, then I have to share Then all right, bye-bye for today.